Okay. I don't know. Do you, you guys can all hear me, right? I don't need, I'm not going to use the, uh, the speaker. Okay, forget it. All right, I guess we'll get started. I am so excited you guys are all here in the rain and um, lots of familiar faces. And I'm, this is awesome, especially Ben, my old friend. <laughs> so this is interesting. So all of it started here, and we'll get into that in a second. Um, San Marino High School, where I used to teach. Um, so my plan is um, that we do this monthly. And um, this is just an intro one to get things rolling. Um, we're going to do some q and I'll show you the agenda in a second. Um, we're going to do giveaways, because um, I always love to give away stuff. Um, and um, eventually, you know, I want to hear some feedback from you about, hey, I want to learn how to do multicam. So we can do a workshop just on multi-camera switching and stuff like that. And how do we take our businesses live? And, and uh, how do we shoot the football games and the basketball games and you know, all that kind of stuff? Um, filmmaking things, all that stuff. So we'll get into, I just want to hear feedback from you guys all night. I would love it and we'll get into all that. So agenda tonight, intros. I'm Dave Basulto, CEO of Iographer. I invented all this madness. Um, Stephanie's my customer success manager. She was one of my students um, at San Marino High School. She's graduated and she's uh, employee of the month every month because we only have three employees. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about Iographer. We're going to do an Ask Me Anything thing, so you guys have any questions. Um, then I'm going to talk about your awesome tools you guys have now. I'm going to show you a couple of camera apps that I highly recommend you using. Um, we'll talk about options in sound and lenses and then more questions. And we'll have a raffle and we'll see where that takes us. And um, feel free to interrupt, raise questions, whatever. Um, this is, uh, we're going to have some fun. Uh, I gave you all a book, so that's my book. If I didn't have enough on my plate, I wrote this dumb book. No, uh, and, uh, it turned out to be an Amazon bestseller. I'm very proud of it. I'll never write another book in my life, but um, <laughs> it was a lot of fun, and um, um, I, lots of people get value out of it. So I'm thankful for that. Um, so it all, yeah, it all started down the street here at San Marino High School. I was a high school media teacher. Um, taught 130 students all day, and I had uh, Ben was actually uh, my assistant for quite a while back there, Ben. And um, I had um, 130 kids, I had two, three um, uh, DSLRs, I had some Sony broadcast cameras, and we were never getting enough work done. So I said, start using you know, your iPhones and iPads. I, start, I call myself the accidental entrepreneur because that's how it all came about. Um, use your iPhones and iPads. And I was getting great shaky footage. I was getting uh, horrible audio and just all kinds of great stuff, but they were at least working, you know. Um, and so, necessities of mother invention, I started to sketch that in the classroom. I said to my students, would you use this? Is this cool? Would you, you know? And they started to help me really shape what I wanted to do. And I said it had to have the ability to add higher quality audio. I wanted to add different lenses. Uh, I wanted handles for stability. So everyone was making cases that just were a case that you kept your, uh, your, your phone or iPad in and just put it in your pocket. And I thought, that's fine, but what if I want to hold it and film, you know? So I, so I developed that, and we actually have five patents on that now, which is kind of fun. I wanted to put it on a tripod. I wanted you to securely hold your device, and um, that was the iographer was born. We did a Kickstarter. I got in Forbes magazine, and um, it's life-changing experience for me. And I, I just love what I do now. So I wanted to really evangelize this everywhere I can. My students started to do more projects together because these are things that were in their pocket. They understood them. They're intuitive, right? You didn't have to learn um, serious camera stuff at, at that time. You know, what's this ISO? What's this? You know, so um, they were just able to point, shoot, and tell stories. And I was really excited about that. We were filming uh, football games from the sideline. We were doing multicam um, news segments from the news team. And then that was going into the classrooms on the screen um, over the server all with iPads, and actually there's even less wires now than there was there, so it's, it's, got, it's evolved even further. We um, used to stream all the football games. We were, I believe, we were one of the first schools around that started to do that. Um, by the time I left, I had had uh, two students up on top, um, one wide angle, one um, uh, close up, a uh, telephoto. And I had two students on the sidelines running back and forth, 50 and 50. And we were streaming that all multi-camera all over to, um, to uh, a place called The Cube, which is, um, it was called High School Cube then, now it's called The Cube. 
Um, and we, um, so that's what we started doing that and uh, parents were able to log in. I think now the cubes evolved where you can actually sell the parents tickets to watch it on those shows and stuff. So there's ways to monetize everything in this world. And then mobile video became mainstream. BBC was huge adopters of this. Um, they were one of the first ones, and I, I really um, um, thank them a million times over because they asked us, so I used to put this rig together, and I used to love to put, you know, mix and match and Frankenstein it out with awesome microphones and whatnot. And so they said, we love your gear, but we want to buy everything from you. So that turned us into um, putting, you know, making our store, iographer.com, and now it's one of the highest, the biggest grossing sites for uh, mobile gear. No one was selling it, you know. Um, and so that they got us up, we became resellers for Rode and all these great companies that I believed in, Manfrotto, things that don't break and last for a long time. Uh, but the BBC are huge adopters of it. I think they shoot a golf show with it now. This guy Dougal Shaw is always doing, he's a big reporter for them, but he just loves uh, taking his iPhone now and shooting everything with the iPhone. Uh, as the president of Mexico, the former one. Um, uh, being interviewed right there, so if it's good enough for him, I mean, I think it's good enough to shoot, you know. What I love hearing is like, well, what about real cameras? And then so I'm like, dude. <laughs> the, uh, 20, uh, the Olympic team, so this is the uh, bobsled and skeleton team, and uh, men and women, and um, they are awesome people, and they love, they, all the coaches use our stuff, and so do the um, players, not players, I don't know what they are, they're skeleton people, I don't know, <laughs> bobsledders, so they use our stuff, but they use a lot for coaching, they made a wonderful video for us, and um, they just love the fact that they can show instant replay, and, and uh, because of their use, a lot of other Olympic teams, the UK team and some other teams are using our stuff now, uh, but we're really doing well with sports, uh, but, you know, iPads, right? <laughs> Things that you're playing games on. <laughs> it's like, you know, watching Netflix, you know, go out and start making your own content. Um, I shared, my, my friend Michelle um, has a gym here in Pasadena. If you guys are in Pasadena, she owns a gym called um, Breakthrough Fitness. You know Breakthrough? Okay. So um, she, uh, her and her husband, Phil. So she, I grew up with her and she told me that she used to do uh, these workout videos every year, and she would uh, cost her about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Bring in all the professional stuff, shoot them, and she would make a slight return on them, and you know, make them into DVDs. And I said, why don't we shoot them with iOS devices? Put them up on a, a way that you, like a Vimeo Plus, where you can download it and have it paid and stuff like that. And who's buying DVDs anymore? <laughs> you know, and so um, we started to do that, and she started seeing big numbers returned, and and. We would do this with like three of us, you know, instead of having 20 people shooting things and cables running everywhere, boom. And no post. No post production. Yeah, so that's a great thing that Michael said. Um, you can, if you use apps like Switcher Studio and things like that, and we'll talk about different apps, um, it'll cut everything for you in the app, and at the end when you're done, you'll have a finalized product that you can just, you know, high def, 1080, or, or soon to be 4K they're going to start doing. Um, and you're done. And if you really want to, you can bring that into Final Cut Pro, all edited, but you can get all the, all the different clips and change them around, stuff like that. So lots of, lots of great workflows, um, but lots of fun. But even if you didn't use that, you just use the camera apps um, and went into a program like Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro, um, um, it's so easy to sync them now. Um, back in the day, we had to have clapperboards and all, but now because we're all on this I, uh, Apple camera, um, you can, it's all time synced together, so you, it's easy to make everything line up. Um, are you guys, anyone Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro or, yeah? So anyone ultimate beginner has no idea what, all right, okay, I like that. I, I haven't used it, but there's a ton of people using a program called LumaFusion. It's amazing, amazing. We'll, we'll look at that, yeah, so we'll do a thing on editing apps and stuff. Uh, LumaFusion, if you guys want to take a look at it, I think it's a $19 app now, which is hilarious. People say, oh, am I so expensive, right? <laughs> um, I mean, I, for my first Premiere Pro, I think I paid like $1,100 for the program for a year, you know. Anyway, tons of great programs to do all this. Um, this is the Premier League, if you guys are, are soccer fans. I don't know soccer very well, but that's, uh, that's Ronaldo over there on the top right who... All my students used to go crazy over. Um, 
And then um, I love the bottom right one. It's uh, the Microsoft Bing team. They use my stuff. And it's funny because they're all Microsoft. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. And then um, are we ready for Hollywood? Yeah, there's Steven Spielberg with our mini case. That was kind of fun when I woke up one morning to see that. And then this was recently, um, the director of uh, Jurassic World um, is using our stuff, which was kind of fun. Steven Soderbergh, does anyone know Steven Soderbergh? Director of uh, Ocean's Eleven, a bunch of other things. What is he saying? Uh, he only wants to shoot on iPhones, okay? So if he has the option to have millions of dollars and red cameras and, you know, he just loves that he can get really in there with these angles and stuff. He's got a new movie coming out, Unsane. I don't know if you guys see the trailer for that. All shot on iPhone and really, yeah, really crazy. Um, so I'm going to show you this is a little video that someone made, uh, these two guys, uh, French guys. And um, it's a really cool um, way to show, that, like if you own a business or something and you wanted to make a, a short video to talk about how your business is and what you do and stuff like that. And I think it's just so powerful now. Um, if if I, you own a business, I mean, I do it for my own business, um, live video, tutorials, you know, um, product reviews. But if I owned, you know... Um, I don't know, a liquor store. Well, I don't know why I said liquor store, but if I own a liquor store, I'd be showing different, hey, this is the new vodka, you know, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but I thought this was really well done. It's all shot on the iPhone X. We're supposed to have audio. Let's see. I work as a chef to test and development for Cesta Salon. I lived in Paris for five years. This city inspires me with its many monuments and unique atmosphere. My work is to design and shape special details. is important, everything has to be beautiful and tasty. I have to wear one? <laughs> I'm interested in the harmony between colors and textures. Look at that macro lens, right? That's just awesome. When I go to my local market, ideas naturally come to me. I love to imagine in my head and go fashion creation. of working with one of the best pastry chefs in the world. Christophe Adon is like my mentor. I've learned so much from him. One of my main goals is to bring intense emotions to the people. At 23, I'm living my child's dream, and I can't wait to accomplish so much more. Who wants dessert right now? Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, that's amazing. Um, I mean, the quality of the video, but 
how powerful it is, right? And, it, and if everybody did this for their businesses, I guarantee you'd see a spike in, in your business. Um, just showing that kind of stuff. It's, and, and it's not hard to do. What was it edit on? Uh, oh, did they say that? I'll have to look that up. I don't know. Did it say at the end? I don't think so. I'm not sure, yeah. There's an article in uh, petapixel.com, P-E-T-A pixel.com, all about the whole thing. Whoops. So what's your guys' story? That's what I want to know. <laughs> so let's do a little Ask Me Anything, and, uh, and then we're going to jump into some apps and some other stuff. So is there any questions so far? <laughs> ben, do you have any questions to start us off? I actually do have a question. Okay, let's see. Stump okay, me. So Have you tried Filmic Pro? Yeah. Have you tried 60 frames? No, it still picks up a weird... Well, like a ghosting kind of thing? If you do a, a plane, if you film a plane and it has the propellers going, it'll... So like a ghosting kind of thing, yeah. Is there any way that that'll be resolved? I haven't seen that um, happen, uh, but I would also... Have you tried to shoot it in like super slow-mo maybe and then... I haven't tried it with the iPads yet. Yeah. There's things I watched online. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, the, I think all the apps are just, get, I've seen them get so much better from day one um, to where they're like, like Filmic Pro, for example, which is an app we'll, we'll talk about um, that allows you to shoot into 4K format. Um, you, can, you can bump it up to, four, uh, to Filmic Extreme, which is like a ProRes format for those that are geeking out there, 100 megabits per second. Um, so that's interesting, action camera kind of stuff, like yeah, like motocross and all that. Filmic, can you sync to do multi-cam editing with the Filmic Pro, or do you have to just do the studio suite or whatever the other one is? So, um, are to do like switching, you mean? Yeah, so you know. no, there's only a couple, there's a couple switchers out there. Um, Sling Studio is one, uh, Switcher Studio, um, what else is there? Uh, Wirecast. Um, were you around when we got uh, uh, TriCaster? Yes. That was the most horror. I don't know if anyone's tried TriCaster, but it's the worst thing in the world. <laughs> do, you, do you like it? I mean, I like TriCaster, but it's like... It's just cables everywhere and... Uh, not if you set it up right. Yeah. But like, it's, there's a learning curve to it. It's, it's, it's not intuitive, hard. right? Yeah. It's really hard to learn. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was our biggest problem. We had had it... We, they bought one for us at the high school, $20,000, because we were going to be able to stream the football game with it. Yeah. And they said, yeah, just run uh, uh, SDI cables out wherever you wanted to. And then it didn't work. And we asked, why not? And they said, we needed more power. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I'm like, well, <laughs> what am I going to get a generator out here? <laughs> you know? So that was kind of interesting. Yeah. But yeah, so they're getting better and better. On that subject, did you guys run a TriCaster Mini like out in your football field? No, it, I forgot which one we had. Um, I don't remember. The, it was like a 9,000 9, unit or something. Oh, is uh, there? Uh, the one I used is a TriCaster 8,000. Yeah. Yeah, no. I know they've they've come they've evolved a lot too. So yeah, I mean, the, I'm okay with TriCaster because I was taught it by someone. Mm -hmm. But the one qualm I have about it is it's really hard to pick up by yourself. Oh yeah, it's it's a such a and it's Windows and it's just really different. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Does the case itself have any like protected properties? Um, as far as the dropping and stuff like that, I mean, people have dropped them and, and not going to crack or anything. It's not going to hurt your iPhone. It depends on how, of course, how far and how rough you are. Yeah. Um, but we are working on some products that Stephanie won't let me talk about, but we've got a new, uh, a new case coming out, not soon, but it's in development that you're going to be able to leave your, uh, you have an otter box or something you want to leave it in. Um, we're going to let you do that now. Um, life proof case or something like that. A lot of people have been asking, you know, because uh, originally it started out where, how do I know what kind of case you have? How am I going to make sure it's going to fit, you know? So, um, but that being said, I mean, we have people, like, like I said, the bobsled team uh, in the elements. There's people, uh, coaches filming stuff in the states where there's snowing and raining. Um, the park services uh, use our stuff out in elements and stuff. So it, it's, it protects it to a certain amount, you know. Any other questions? More. Yes, Ben, more. Yeah, um, okay. So, <laughs> is there an external way to control that on the side, or do you have to touch the actual iPad? 
for what now? Zooming, zooming, I'm sorry. Um, let's see. Depending on what you use, I think, okay, if you use Filmic Pro, for one, they have an a app called Filmic Remote. And it's either on your watch, so I could set it up right there and have it on my watch, see where I'm lined up and press go and everything like that. Um, or you can have it um, uh, on another iPhone or iOS device, and in that, in that mode, you can zoom in and do all kinds of things. Okay. Press start and stop and all that. But besides that, you have to touch the monitors. Yes, if you have one device and that's it. But it's, it's pretty simple, and then also you can set it up to do um, uh, presets too. So if you want it to go at this point, I'll press one so it zooms to that one person or whatever. So you can do fun stuff like that. Yep. What? So yes, Michael. When you, when you first did your doodle for the IR, mm -hmm. what was the what was that date from that date to when you did the GoFundMe launch? Um, How soon did that process get going? Cause so we started in. Um, it was, a, it was a conversation I had in, in, a, in December in like 2013. Okay. And um, I told my wife, and she goes, yeah, go for it, you know. So, so I started to sketch this thing up, and I would say um, mid, early February, we had a printed a, a model. So I had gotten to a sketch that I liked. I, I found an engineer that would, uh, for 300 bucks, made the model I had into a real 3D model. And uh, he's kicking himself in the pants right now. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then I sent it to a place called Shapeways in New York. Um, $250 later, I had a 3D print uh, and it worked. And then I said, oh yeah. So these are the mock-ups. These are all the mock-ups, yeah. The prototypes that were just yeah. for the iPad mini and then, um, one of the students had told me, you should do Kickstarter. Um, and I, was, I had no idea what that was. Yeah. And so then we did that and, and it just started to catch on and I was getting phone calls from Forbes and New York Times and wow. it was crazy. <laughs> and then that's, what's that? I was there. Yeah, you were, that's right. And then luckily, um, so all that was happening and then one of uh, our, my parents that I was, uh, had taught his kids, um, was was uh, came and asked me. He said, "I love what you're doing. You know, here's 500 grand. I want to be your partner." And that kind of started everything. <laughs> One of the parents, uh, yeah, of the students I had taught for, um, and uh, we had been really good friends because we had worked in the trenches. Uh, he was the uh, he was the uh, um, booster club, yeah, booster club. Uh, um, yeah, his son was on JV football, and he was just like, "Oh man!" So I would always help him and set him up. He was he was the guy that had to go film the games, you know. And um, so he, he, we become really good friends, and, and he just, he, luckily he was a big time lawyer, and he, he kind of helped me out a lot. So yeah, it's very, very right place at the right time. Can't even tell you. <laughs> you know, it's lots of fun. But it's, it's awesome to do. I mean, I, I, it's funny because I've been asked to talk about entrepreneurship and all that, because that was a big, you know, leap of faith I had to do. Um, but it worked out, and that's we can talk about that another time. But that was something that, you know. Do you believe in this? <laughs> yes, I do. Um, so that was kind of fun. Anything else we can talk about? Yes. Yes, sir. You've got different lenses on the website. Yep. I noticed. What are the specific ones for? And I'm going to demo those in a little bit. Um, we'll show some, some different lenses you can use and stuff. Um, we'll talk about some audio options. I just really wanted to keep it simple. And then if you guys want to come in, we can play around with stuff and shoot and and uh, do stuff like that. Should we move on? Move on? Okay, and please feel free to keep getting pizza. There's also water back there. Oh, there's water now, yes. Go and get a water bottle. Yes, go get a water bottle. So, um, so this is called Reflector, if you guys ever need anything um, to film. Um, show people your, what you're doing on your iOS device. What's really cool about Reflector is there's a little button there that I can press uh, record and it'll record the whole thing. Of course you can do that on your iPhone now anyway. Um, so we'll look at the, take a look at the camera app here. And it helps if I take the lens clap off. That's, that's 101 guys, lens cap off. And let me line up the lens. So Apple's iPhone X, or iPhone 8 Plus and the, and the iPhone X, um, with the dual lenses now. Is this the telephoto lens? Well, that's the wide angle. 
um, are going to get you some rounded edges sometimes in, in photo mode. And so we're going to try and escape that. So if we go into video mode, though, you see it's all gone. And um, so that, so I'm just going to show you really quick. That is your normal shot, right? And then if we add this, I'll have to line it up again, but you can see how much wider we are now. Can you tell the difference from that? Yeah. So that's a lot wider. Um, so one thing, the biggest thing you need to learn here tonight, if you've never shot on your Apple camera, or if you have and haven't done this, see how, I don't know if you see right now, let's see. So see how it has the little bars around them? So it's focusing on them. And I move over here. You know, what else is there to focus on? It loves Michael a lot, so. <laughs> and there's Stephanie. Um, if I just started filming, it's going to start going like that. So I'm going to select something. So I'm just going to click over here and double click. Now I've got it on autofocus and auto lock. So now I'm good to go. I can film whatever. Yeah, if you're going to move towards the person or they're moving away, you know, this is really for stable shots that you just want to sit and film something. Um, lock your focus. You will be 200 times better uh, for doing it. You'll be happier. Um, vital, vital to do. Um, what else did the camera app? Well, so another thing about the camera app that I don't care for is that I cannot monitor audio with it. Um, what's really important that I think is that you make sure your audio sounds great. Audio is everything. With the Apple camera, for some reason, they don't allow it. But there's two other great apps that I'm going to show you right now that I love that um, you can uh, monitor the audio with. So that's, that's pretty much the Apple camera app. Just lock your focus and go film. <laughs> uh, bring the footage. I mean, it shoots beautiful video. And later on, if you want to just bring it in, add some music or voiceover, I mean, it's perfect for that. Um, while I'm at this, let me show you. So this, ma um, this lens that I have, I'll take it off for a second, comes in two pieces. The bottom part of it is a macro lens. And there's a guy that shoots video um, for National Geographic um, who sends us stuff all the time. So that is, so let me just see if you can see. Wow. Right? I, I haven't had a manicure, so I apologize. <laughs> but we can go, let's see where. Not much light here, but you can kind of see. Whoop. I know. Yes, Stephanie's a genius at that. She's, ama she's amazing at insects and leaves. Um, let's see, can I get where's some light? But you can see, I mean, you can really, I have ugly fingers, but you can really get in there. So it's really a fun lens to use to go shoot um, um, really close up stuff. And you saw that other video that had a lot of great things. So lenses, we're kind of going mixed lenses, wide angle lens, that's a great lens to use. All around lens, um, I love it. Okay, so let's jump out of the Apple camera app, which I hope you all graduate from. And we'll look at Filmic Pro, which is my favorite app. And let's see, can I put this up a little bit here? Okay. Let's see. My oh, there we go. Okay, so this is Filmic Pro and um, does everything you could possibly want in a camera. I'm going to jump on here. I think, uh, let's see, if I go into... Uh, I'm sorry, let's go back. This little uh, camera, this little gear is where you go into all the fun stuff. Uh, if I wanted to plug in a microphone to it, I would go into the audio section here and I can switch between different microphones. So you would look for what's called a headset microphone or you would look for um, the name of the microphone you're using. It'll show up there sometimes too. And that's, you're going to get much better um, audio. You're going to get, they have Bluetooth microphones they're working with now. I haven't played with those yet. Um, the other thing, you're going to jump in here and change resolution. So this is 4K Extreme. It's going to fill up your phone pretty quickly. But the video is amazing. Um, what's good about 4K, shooting 4K? So 
If you're going to Facebook, if you're going to YouTube, nine times out of 10, you're gonna do 1080p, which is normal high definition, 720p on Facebook, that's the max they allow you right now. Um, what I like to shoot 4K in is because I'm getting a higher bit rate, higher resolution. So if I ever wanna go in there and, and, uh, and I'm also future proofing it because we're going there, you know, um, so I want to future proof my videos for later. Um, so I just love shooting with it. I was doing any kind of effects or anything. I just have more pixels to play with. Um, but it does fill up everything really quickly. So there's Filmic Extreme and then you can switch to different quality modes, Apple standard. So this is Apple standard, normal, like your, the Apple camera, right? So Filmic Pro takes you up two more levels, which is just way better video. Um, let's see, hardware, this is where I think it is, let's see, no, we'll go into hardware with a second one, I'll show you another lens, um, where is it, device, there we go, so uh, remote control, I'm going to turn that on, and then let's see if I can get into my camera app, I love my Apple watch, but I'm blind and I need it to be like a big iPad mini right here. <laughs> Um, where's Filmic Pro? There we go. You should connect in the perfect world. Yes, are you going to play right? <coughs> no, not connecting. <gasps> I wonder if it's because it's not on the same Wi Fi. Let's see. Let's try it again. Device. Oh, I think I know what's the problem. It's connected to my iPhone 10. It's going, what are you doing with this other iPhone? You don't use this. Okay. Device. Okay. So I'll just walk around for a second. And we'll just take care of that. So if you guys could see this, and, uh, and that is on my little watch there. So what's nice is I can go set this up somewhere, get my shot all lined up, go walk into place, and press, I, I have it all right here to start filming. Let's see, turn it around. You can also use this um, with, an, like I said, an iPhone, another iPhone or an iPad, if you have multiple devices, to have this all set up so that you can be your own cameraman. What I love about this is that it freed me from my wife asking her, please come and set the shot up for me. <laughs> but no, I can go do it on my own now. Um, and it comes, I think it's the $14.99 bundle that Filmic sells. Um, it comes with the, the watch app and then this app, but also the iPad app if you need to, or I, iPhone. So... It's an awesome, awesome tool. Um, is that what you're shooting in? You're shooting 4K at 30 frames? That's 4K at 30 frames. Um, so I go in here, so 4K, but then I can go in here and go, okay. Um, I think it's doing 4K 60 now. Let me see, is it stay at 4K? Yeah. So this will go 4K 60 now. It's always progressive, right? It's always progressive, yeah. Uh, with Filmic Pro, no. It's, it's, I mean, you can do screen grabs later, especially if you have a 4K thing, you know, but I mean, the Apple camera is pretty awesome to take photos with now. Um, we're getting some really high res stuff out. Yes? Is the anamorphic like actually anamorphic or is it just crop? We're going to play anamorphic in a second. I'm going to show you that. That's my favorite lens in the world. Um, so yeah, you can change, you can change it any way you want for frame rates, frames per second, whatever. Um, I, I'm 99 times out of 100, I, I'm just shooting 30 frames uh, for what I need it for. Um, if I, I, I was shooting 60 frames uh, for my friend's video because she was moving so much and, and doing, um, you know, uh, it was a little bit of a nightmare for audio sync later, but not that bad. Um, but she was doing so much uh, for her workout videos that I wanted to really catch the motion, you know. You can't, but they desperately want to. Oh, okay. 
so I wouldn't doubt them. It's in the works. In the works. Um, so yeah, so you can change your, uh, your, your resolution. You can go all the way down to standard def, 720. And then I think, uh, what's the max frame rates here? 240. If you need anything faster than 240, then you're shooting hummingbirds. But it depends on the phone that you have, right? Yeah. Um, that's true. So 6 plus and above will do that. Um, yeah, 6 plus and above. Well, I think I don't, the SC thing does the 4K too now. I don't know. Does anyone have an SE or iPhone SE? No. Um, let's see what else here. So yeah, this little frame. You can do beautiful time lapses with this, um, setting this up. Really slow-mo time, really, really beautiful stuff. Um, so audio, device. So here's where you can set presets. Um, so if you like everything you have set up, you can set it as a preset. Ben's preset, don't touch, you know. Um, you can do content management stuff in there, Tra time code track, content management. You can change the production name, the scene name, blah, blah, blah. So you can really um, do stuff like that. What's that? So you can come back and edit. Yeah, it's come back and edit later. Um, it uses a lot of other tools. I don't know if you guys know the DJI Osmo, which is um, uh, a gimbal that has three axis and does all that smooth filming kind of stuff. So if, if you're making a movie, you know, you might want to have some smooth shots. You know, you can do some stuff like that. The anamorphic lens, which I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, the Beast Grip Boo, which is our competitor. We don't talk about them. No, no, they're, <laughs> they're fine. Um, cover photo lens is a new lens. I don't, I don't even know that hasn't really caught, caught on. Um, but let me pull it out. Are you able to do like slow motion and all that? Mm -hmm. This is my favorite lens in the whole world. So I am old enough to have seen a movie called Lawrence of Arabia. And I don't know if you guys know those old movies, beautiful 16 by nine, just anamorphic, just gorgeous. This uh, and modern movie would be um, Hateful Eight. They shot it like that. Um, so this lens um, allows you to do that. Did anyone, has you guys heard of a, of a film called Tangerine? So Tangerine was um, a Sundance Film Festival darling, I want to say two years ago or a year, year and a half, two years ago. And uh, it was all shot on the iPhone 5 and uh, got a major distribution deal. Um, the whole movie was shot with this lens. So let me see if I can line this up for you. Of course, it's got a smudge on it, which is lovely. I have a 10 year old, that's why. Let's see. So let me, let me line this up. Am I blocking it? I think I'm blocking. Oh, there we go. So if you see, I've got, um, everyone looks really skinny and tall, which is awesome, right? That's the way we want to look. Um, let's see, let me get a little more light on the subject. So we're going to go in here and we're going to de-squeeze this. We're going to go into hardware and we're going to change it to the widescreen. Let's see, this is all. And that is super wide angle. And I just love this. And see how it's pulsing on this too? You have to like lock it like that. When you lock it on one person, mm -hmm. but now move over to pan over to someone mm -hmm. else, it still stays in focus. It does. So you pull away from the person you've locked on to. Uh, depending, if you have this all manually set up, it will stay locked on that person. Um, you can set presets in here so that you can push the button and as you're moving, it'll move to that other person. But then you'll get that pulse. No, not, it's, it's more of a gradual move to that next person. Kind of like racking focus to, uh, with, with, a new, with a normal camera. Um, but this, this shoots just gorgeous video. I was wondering why it's so fast. I forgot to have the fast frame rate on. Um, any questions so far about Filmic Pro? 
DJI mobile button, mm -hmm. what, what adjustment would it have made? So that, as if you have the DJI Osmo connected to the iPhone, right. um, it, it allows it to take over. So the controls now, um, you can zoom in and uh, start and stop, just basic controls. You have the one in your, your thing? There you go. <laughs> That's the newest one. That's 249 Right, right. So it, it, it's really good. Yeah, those are nice. Those are really nice. And they're great for smooth, you know, I, I, if I was making movies, I would kind of do have some shots with stuff like that. You know. So yeah, you just, um, as long as it's connected you, and you, uh, it'll, it'll read that device, you'll, you'll, have, you'll have the, yeah, it's really nice. It's a great app. And they're constantly adding new things all the time. Uh, what else? What's sync here? Ah, this is new. I haven't seen this. So apparently you can set presets in the cloud and download them and have them saved for other people to use. Did not know that. Can you load graphics on this app? Uh, like lower thirds and things? Yeah. No, that's a great feature request. Yeah. Um, Stabilization right there, I would highly recommend never using it. You'll get a little choppy video once in a while. It's not good. Um, try and be as stable as you can. There's some great apps out there called Stabilizer, one of them, that you'll stabilize your footage. Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, all those have stabilizers. Um, but you know, one of the things when you're shooting, try and be tight right here and close instead of like, you know, hey. Um, what else is here? It has your guides on there. If you guys want guides, lower third, I'm sorry. Um, oops, rule of thirds, thank you. Let's get out of that darkness. So rule of thirds, you'll see the lines there for you real filmmakers. Um, what else? Presets. So that's Filmic Pro. What's also nice about it is it has um, great color now. So you can shoot in what's called a log format. So if you guys um, wanted a raw, like, just like you're shooting raw in DSLRs, it does that as well. So everything's really flat. And then uh, when you bring it into um, an editing uh, situation, your coloring, color correction will look amazing. But it's got presets here that you can change. You can change the color temperature, that's new. Yep. Auto white balance. Uh, I'm trying to think, I think, the, the log format is only in the iPhone 10 right now. Let's see. Um, more. Oh, that's new. I haven't seen that. Oh, I have this. Why aren't they giving this to me? Let's see. Will it let me? Oh, I'm not going to do this right now. <laughs> I can't give you all my password. Um, let's get out of here. So there. So here, you see on the far right, it says log. So you can shoot natural, dynamic, um, flat, or log. Log is going to give you the most uh, ability to color correct it later. But you can do a lot of stuff in camera too, you know. So then you're not using stabilization in the Filmic Pro or on the Apple phone itself. No stabilization at all. Okay. Um, I have I have so many toys that I like to play with, like like sliders. Um, uh, Syrup is a new company, and I guys have SYRP. They make these great um, uh, slider rigs, all, all um, uh, automated and stuff. It's uh, so awesome. We sell their um, their little puck that they have. What do you know, Syrup? What's it called? Do you know, what's that? Genie. Syrup Genie. Yeah. So you put it on top of the of of, um, of your tripod. Put the put the um, iPad on their iPhone, and you can have it pan. Um, really nice. You can, uh, if you buy the accessories for it, you can have it kind of almost three axis gimbal, do some, some fun stuff. It's got some really nice sliders for motion control. Um, some really cool stuff. Um, oh, this is on time lapse. No wonder it was kind of funky. Let's go back. So that, and then um, it also has a zoom control. So on the right, that button right there, uh, that line, I should say, you can kind of push in and out. Some fun stuff. That's a really ugly color. Let's see. Yeah, you want to go from 32K or something. That works for now. It looks better on here. <laughs> 
So that's Filmic Pro. Um, I highly recommend you guys playing with it. Um, there's a test next time we do this, so make sure, you, make sure you're all downloaded. it. Um, lots of fun stuff on Filmic Pro. Now, let's get out of this for a second. Let's take a look at Switcher, which um, when I taught at San Marino High School, I would have died to have had Switcher uh, Pro or Switcher Studio. Switcher Go is a free app. It's the baby to their uh, Switcher Studio, which is, uh, I think it's $2.99 a year, which is nothing for what it does. And Switcher Go, you have to log in, blah, blah, blah. We're just going to go. So if I logged in, what I could do from there is go um, out to YouTube, go out to Facebook, um, live streaming, wherever you are. Um, in fact, I was at um, the San Marino uh, basketball game recently. There were the playoffs. One of my last students that I taught um, was there graduating. So I went to see his game and I said, hey, let's stream this. So <laughs> I pulled everything out and started filming the game. Um, so we're just going to record mode. What I love about this, hey, echo. Okay. <laughs> we're going to somehow mute. There we go. That was fun. Um, that's interesting that Filmic Pro didn't do that. Hmm. Right? That's interesting. Switcher. So, okay. So Switcher Studio. What's nice about this is that um, you have your zoom controls on the left. Very simple. Boom, boom, boom. What's powerful about this is I can go into this little star here and start adding video or graphics. So I'm going to go in here and um, choose a photo. And uh, we'll talk about her, this wonderful student we met at, uh, at uh, Cronkite School. We'll do it as an image for now. We'll say done. So I could um, technically turn the camera around on me and I'm down here. So, hey, today we're talking about this awesome student over here. We met her recently um, at uh, this school. And then this is the video I shot about it. This is some B-roll I shot. You'll see later why. <laughs> and then we'll go back to me, or maybe I'm, I'm standing over there and you guys are talking. Uh, but what's so awesome, what's awesome about this is that I can have these images in there. I can have a lower thirds there to, um, uh, you know, my name, whatever. I can make all this. There's so many free um, apps out there to make lower thirds, um, little identifiers, little logos. Um, and you can create this show right there on your phone. Um, just set this up, okay, press. Bring yeah. another camera feed for whatever unknown reason. But so here's the main switcher board. So this is Switcher Studio app. It's the pro version, the 229 or whatever that he was talking about. So just imagine here. So I have this camera, which is the built-in camera on this iPad. However, I could theoretically sync from other devices who also have the app, and those cameras would pop up. How many devices? Up to nine. Wow. So iPhone or iPads, you could have connected. So I can have all of those popped up here. I can also have preset, you know, lower thirds, like he was showing, picture and pictures, all ready to go here. So I could go ahead, let's say I had a show in mind, and I can go ahead and prep all of my shots. So I prep iPad one, iPad two. Um, I'm gonna do this lower third, this picture and picture. So I have all those set up, and whatever here is gonna be what's ever broadcasting live and what you're gonna be recording. So it's awesome because you can just kind of click and drag in. So I can use hand to camera one, click and drag, hand to camera two, bring in lower thirds, bring in this title, bring in picture and picture, do a dual screen, do a like triple screen, split between um, lots of different options. So it's a really awesome app. Um, you don't have to go live, that's kind of like the big kicker for this app, but if you just want to record a show and you're not trying to go live, but you, the fact that you can just switch between and kind of do a manual director mode, that's really helpful. Um, or you can go live, Facebook, YouTube, there's a lot of different options, yeah. Since you said you could do like nine iPads at the same time, mm -hmm. is each one automatically like, if like one iPad's on him, one iPad's on me, it's like one filming all him, one filming all me, yeah, so and then one filming like one whole entire thing, like you're yeah. driving. So switch your studio if you have the pro version, it will save the footage from all of those nine cameras. So let's say you cut to iPad one at 
two minutes, right? And then you, later in post-production, you're like, oh, I wish I was on camera four at two mm. minutes. You can then take that footage and it'll be a lot more tedious, but you have all of that footage to manually edit later. So it will record to each of those iPads that And footage. then the one long stream one. And then this iPad editing. will have the full like edited version that you put together. Is all that going into the same iPad or am I going to have to go to camera one so when it's done, so let's so we just finished filming um, this conference in, in um, Palm Springs, and um, we shot what three days? Um, I um, well, probably about six hours a day, right? Yeah. And it was about uh, forty-five gigs a day um, at at high def. It was ten eighty, and so when you film, like she said, in director mode, um, each camera, each iPad is going to have its own thing. And own footage, thank you. Um, and then it's going to bring in, when you're done shooting, it'll bring in all of those angles to your main switcher iPad and will um, do a, a high definition cut for you. If you want to later, you can bring in all the footage um, onto um, your desktop and edit them all synced up already, all lined up and everything in Final Cut Pro. And they're trying to do Premiere now too. So it's, it's pretty awesome. They're a big announcement. It's hush-hush right now, but it's uh, 4K capability at NAB. Um, so you're able to do 4K with it now. But, um, it, I mean, this is a TV station in your backpack. <laughs> it's what I love about it, you know. Um, and it can be as, I mean, I knew nothing about filming coming on to this job, not to be, or to be completely honest. And then Switcher, this seemed really intimidating. I was like, ugh. But it's just so, what I love about it, it's so intuitive because it's literally just click and drag, click and drag. And it's just very simple. You know, a 10 year old could do it, no problem. And it can be as simple as you want. Just have two iPads, one on, you know, your subject and one on a screen or something and switch between those. Or you can have nine, you know, multi cam and get really fancy. So, would it be possible to get a feed like directly from a screen? And wired into that? Um, one second. Through, like, or to get a feed, um, what do you mean wired into there? Like look, from a different kind of camera? Well, no, not necessarily from a camera, but say from a computer. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have a thing called Switcher Cast for the Mac right now. And I think they just launched one for, the, for PC too. So you can use your, your computer as, um, as a, a input. So if you're doing your PowerPoint or whatever you're going to do, your you know, training. And they training. also have features where if you want to, let's say you're doing your own podcast and you want to bring in your friend to interview and you want to bring in a Skype call or yeah. a FaceTime, they, can, they have that feature where you can bring in a FaceTime and it's, it's record them. In, in the well, so, th no, that's Wirecast. Yeah. <laughs> but Switcher, you can do the same thing, though. All you, have, um, all you have to do is, and let me see if I have it on here. Um, it's under recording. So over here on the right, it's going to let me. So this button right here lets me screen record, but I guess it's not letting me because I'm plugged into the Mac. This button right here. Um, when you press that and you have Switcher Studio on your, mach on your thing, um, it will let you, it'll turn into a, um, it'll say Switcher Cast on it. So you can actually be on a Skype call on your phone or iPad, and then that will be an input to your, to your, your whole workflow um, with audio and everything. So you can have conversations and whatnot. Do they have tutorials for this? Yeah, on, on switcherstudio.com. Lots of good ones. Dave, when you're doing like the conference, like six hours a day or whatever, how... Tired, <laughs> drained. My concern is how reliable is your Wi-Fi source to, Great. That, to lock that signal without drops? Absolutely opinion. agree. So that was my biggest dilemma about all of this because I had drops and stuff and it was horrible. <laughs> so what I, we, we worked out and the Switcher guys helped me out a lot with was um, they recommended, um, you know, the Google Home Wi-Fi, the little puck they sell? Yeah. Get one of those, set it up at home, call it whatever. We have IOG Live is ours. Um, a room this size. We had, it was probably like four times this size, right? The, at Q, the room, at least, yeah. So we had one in the back of the room, and we had two iPads in the front of the room, and it was picking up no problem, and we were streaming with no problem at all. Um, we had that connected to an Ethernet cable. So we had it hardwired in, and then we had the Google Puck was our main, so no one else could get on that, because 
when they have like Wi-Fi here or free Wi-Fi, it's just going to be a mess. Um, so you got to have your own little thing, but it's, I think it's $99 or something for the Google Puck. So you said you have it connected to the Ethernet, which is connected to... To their, um, to wherever the company that, that provides, um, uh, internet oh, okay. for, the for, venue for, right for venue, exactly. Okay. Um, so, you, so highly recommend if you can plug in. Now, if you can't do that, what if you're like on location? okay. So then, um, a lot of people are having success, and, and I would highly recommend going to the Switcher Studio Facebook group. They are so active as heck. Um, in fact, if you guys are part of our Facebook group, I'll put a link up there. Um, uh, they have, is it Verizon, the MiFi thing, or something like that? Um, but there's a 5G little MiFi thing that they're getting great. Okay. responses from that so you've got your own little network mobile as long as you get the signal that's the key <laughs> but if you had the signal you know that being said um, I've filmed on location as a teacher uh, back in the day where I would go we would go to Monrovia High School or somewhere and they didn't have internet for me to use so I would go off my LTE uh, but I would only shoot two angles close by and I would stream it live in 540 but I would use the I would use the director mode, and later when I came home, I had the high definition one, and I would upload that one later. So you even if if it's streaming at 540 on the on the on Facebook or YouTube, still a nice decent picture, especially on mobile devices, and you're getting great audio, which is huge, which we're going to talk about in a minute in audio. Right? Okay, you guys dazzled by these little apps? Any questions about them? They're fun. Um, I'm going to talk to Nick and get us a deal, damn it. It's like $1.99 a year or something, right? It's, I think it's $2.99 a year, but I'm going to twist his arm. I'm bigger than him. And then you say, well, we'll go, you use them to go live. Like, that's the issue I'm having right now. Like, I, I got the equipment now. I'd like to film the basketball games. I'd like to do all this, but right now my district's trying to get me to, like, they're creating a Facebook account and, mm -hmm. and a YouTube account that I would control and be under the district's name. So. Mm -hmm. I gotta sign off my firstborn child and my Absolutely, and yeah. <laughs> and all that. But I mean, when I asked the director, because I had a meeting with her the other day, she kinda of looked at me and said, like, I, I don't know how to do it, Mark. So mm. how how difficult is it for me if I I get us to buy the switcher thing and then and then do it? Is it really easy? simple and they'll help you out and we'll help you out. Okay. Um if we have to do some FaceTime stuff, you know. Um very simple to do though. Um I set I literally set all this up in for this Q show, like, and with all the like, so they sent me a sheet of who's going to be on there. I made all these lower thirds; they're all animated. Um, I did that on a like 10 p.m. at night until like midnight, and I was done. The next morning, we left at six in the morning. We were streaming by nine, okay. and it was really simple. Okay. Big thing is the connection. So you've got to make sure you've got a pretty decent connection where you're at. So like I said, if you're going to get one of those wireless router things that go everywhere, the a MiFi's or whatever from Verizon or AT and T or, you know, or is the district going to let you plug in to an Ethernet cable wherever you are? The basketball did they have that there? There's a big giant server housing thing which I knocked one time. So maybe. <laughs> or will they also? I mean, will, we have wireless. So will the will the tech guys let you have your sub network? Is what you want? You don't want the network that everybody else is on because you're going to get interruptions all the time. Okay. You want your own little subnet that they can create. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay. All right, let's let's go back to this little thing. So those are my three big camera apps for today. EpicTutorials.com, awesome tutorials on how to use Filmic Pro. If you want to be a pro at it, I think it's a, it's still free. I think, but I, this guy made this great series of videos on how to do all this stuff. Really fun stuff. Microphone, Stephanie, you want to talk about microphones? All right. I'm going to use the Lou. That's for you. Thanks. I leave you, Stephanie. Oh, boy. Okay, so microphones. So who always thinks, you know, I'd, uh, I could create vid video, but it's just really intimidating and audio. It's just, why would I use an iPhone? Because the microphone on that thing is terrible. Who's ever thought that? Nobody? Okay, there we go. Some honest people. Um, so microphones, audio tends to be the biggest, biggest issue and hurdle when making good video. Um, we're going to go over three like basic categories of microphones, shotgun, lav, and handheld. Um, the most important thing to remember when 
trying to use professional microphones with iOS devices like iPhones and iPads is that most of these are going to require a special adapter cable to make it compatible with iPhones and iPads. Um, so as we kind of go through the microphones, if any kind of catch your eye and say, oh, I would be interested in that microphone, talk to us, email us, or anything like that, we'll always make sure that you're getting the correct cable to make it work with your gear. Um, I won't go into depth too much on that because it's a little bit more advanced. Um, so here I have a couple of microphones listed. So here, the one on the left is going to be the Video Mic Go. This is our hands down our best entry level microphone. Um, it's going to be a shotgun microphone. So what that means is like I have it up here is that's just going to capture whatever audio is directly in front of it. It's not going to pick up any surrounding background noise. It's just going to be kind of like a point and shoot. Very simple. Um, it gives you a lot of flexibility because it's going to be mounted if you're using our gear or another case or something, it's going to be mounted on the top. Um, so you can kind of just point and shoot. So you don't have to worry about people being hooked up to lavaliers like I am here or um, passing off a handheld microphone. And so if you're just going to be really simple, you know, I might be doing interviews sometimes. I might be doing myself. I might be shooting out on the go in the park, outdoors. You don't really know. I definitely recommend doing a shotgun microphone because that's going to give you the most flexibility. Um, and then, what's your, remind me your name again. Mark, he has um, one of the video mic pros, so that's kind of the next step up from this microphone up here. It's fancy. So this microphone, um, <laughs> yeah, the Go starts at $99. So it's very basic entry level, so to kind of give you an idea of what entry level means. Um, over on the right-hand side, you can see that fuzzy thing on the top. That's the Rode Video Micro. What? There's one right there. Oh, yeah, there is one right here. Um, I'm going to take this off so you can see what the microphone <laughs> itself yeah, looks like. So it's about, what, half the size of that microphone. Um, so this is going to be a step down from that one, but it's still an amazing entry-level microphone. And it's a shotgun microphone, same concept. Um, and this comes with a nice windshield cover, so if you're outdoors in the elements or something, you don't have to worry about wind getting in the way. Um, so that's another option. This one's only $59. Um, and then, that's the best microphone for that price I've ever heard. Of yeah, life. really amazing. And we're going to show you some demo footage so you can see what it sounds like without a microphone and with this microphone to give you an idea of how um, magnificent it is. And then on the bottom, we have a, a picture of one of our students that we met holding a handheld microphone. Um, that's great if you're going to be doing a lot of interviews, if you're a reporter, journalist, whatever um, your idea of the best video is, that's another great option as well. So let's look at some demo videos. Oh, I'm sorry. And then another option is a lavalier microphone. So that's like what I'm wearing. So if you're you know, into podcasts or just doing interviews, you're kind of starting on your own, doing YouTube, vlogging, anything like that, and you just want to be sitting in front of your computer or your iPhone propped up um, recording, lavalier is always the best way to go. It's very simple. Um, they have wireless options. We have wired ones. It kind of depends on your opinion and your budget. Also the little connector that connects to the phone, the TRRS. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, a lot of microphone, yeah, adapter cables, yes. So that's what I was going to ask you on the lavalier, because I have two little lavaliers, and I guess they're wireless with a USB connector on them. Mm -hmm. So you would need a USB to Lightning, which we do sell on our website. Yeah, but can um, I connect two? Because if I have two, you know, I have, a, like I have Anchor. We run a new which, gas. do you know what brand your lavalier microphone is? Yeah, I brought everything to ask you. Okay, like, yeah, we'll go over the gear. Okay. Um, so there's a brand, and then we have one in the back or up here, called the iRig Mic Lav. Um, which is nice because that one's going to be wired. It's not wireless. It'll plug directly into the headphone jack on your phone or your iPad. Um, and then it has a little kind of breakout box in the center of the wire where it has another port. So you could technically plug in another lavalier microphone and then another one and another one and kind of daisy chain them together. Or you could plug in a set of headphones. Um, I'll, once we're done, we can come up and I can show we're you. We're raffling one off. Today. Yeah, we are raffling one off. So we, I can show you in detail what it looks like. Um, so that's another great option as well. So let's watch some videos, kind of see how, how important is audio. So this one is the iRig Mic Lav, so the one that we were just talking about. You want to make sure audio works? Should be on. Uh, of course yep, not. Of course not. Oh, this is off. Oh, there you go. Wait, start over. <coughs> Did you turn I'll off? I'll try it. One of my favorite. Oh, okay. Here we go. Okay, so we're filming in uh, Lacey Park here in San Marino. It was a super, super windy day, which was great to film uh, testing on microphones. 
Okay, so this is the iRig Mic Lab, and it's one of my favorite lavalier, wired lavalier microphones because it's simple to use, it's got great sound, and right on the side, a breakout box that comes on it, you can add another microphone. So if you have two microphones going in, you can do that. You can also plug in headphones to monitor the audio. So it's super cool. Let's listen to it and see how it sounds. Right now, we've got no microphone. Here we go. Okay, so now I've got the iRig mic lab clipped onto my shirt right here, and you should be hearing audio a lot better than before when we had no audio. Um, it's a great lavalier choice. I love to use it. It's got a long cord, um, so I'm standing probably about three feet away from the iPad, and um, I have great audio now. It's uh, simple to use. You can add an extra one. It's a great microphone. Check out the iRig Mic Lab. Okay, so definite notice and difference, right? I mean, you could still hear some like, you know, thundering or a little wind in the distance, but his voice was crystal clear. And that microphone's only forty nine ninety five. More importantly, did anyone see the squirrel going up the tree? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, so the next video I'll show you is this microphone being demoed. Okay, we're gonna check out the Rode Video Micro. The best microphone you can get for under sixty dollars. That's right, the Rode microphone. We're gonna test it out now. This is how it sounds. Okay, so now Stephanie's got the Rode uh, micro boom pole. Uh, we've got the micro on top. This should sound really good. I mean, if you're making some short films or a big film or whatever kind of film, this is a great setup to use for your audio. Uh, Rode Video Micro is uh, about $59. Check it out on our website. I'm Dave Basulto. Thanks. So yeah, we want, so this was a kind of a beginner workshop. We definitely wanted to show the two cheapest microphones um, and best ones out there. So for only $49.95 or $59, you can dramatically change the sound level um, on your film. Does anybody have questions about those microphones? Yes. Do you have to use a boom? No, okay, so I had a boom pole on there. So this is the microphone that was on that boom pole. Um, and the boom pole is a separate product, so you would kind of clip this into the top of the boom pole, which has an, a wire threaded alongside of it, and then that wire would plug into your phone. Um, so that's another optional accessory if you want, but you can have this mounted exactly like how that one's mounted. Does the sound quality change? Or? Um, with, the, with the cable? Or no, with the like boom pole? Up and over versus it being straight on your... Mm, yeah, I mean, you're getting closer, um, so that's definitely a big thing. Um, it's kind of the old school way of the filmmaking. You want yeah. to get up there with the boom and get in. Maybe there's multiple people talking. You want to be really in yeah. what they're doing. That's um, so definitely the thing we that. recommend for like intro filmmakers. You know, they really want to do you know a setup, and if they're going to have multiple actors talking, and then they can have the boom pull over on one actor while they're talking, and then switch over to the next one as they're switching dialogue. It just gives you a little bit more flexibility. What's amazing um, is things like ounces. I mean, yeah. you can hold it with a couple of fingers like this. It's yeah, so light. very lightweight. It sounds, I don't know if it sounds silly, but it sounds like you've been cleaning it from the... From the yes, okay. absolutely, yeah. And that was definitely, so this windshield cover definitely made a huge difference. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. So I would have thought just also an idea of having a miniature Bluetooth adapter so you can plug in a 3.5 millimeter connection to I it. I haven't played with those yet. I want to, yeah. Yeah. He's talking about the, they have some Bluetooth adapters now that are 3.5 inch you can plug in and Bluetooth microphone stuff. So yeah. That's kind of all new range right now. I want to play with all that stuff. You had a question? Yeah, uh, so the audio was, uh, there was no post. Um, nope, absolutely. So everything you saw was filmed on an iPad. Um, absolutely no post production, no anything, you know, yeah. How much is a boom pole? Who? 90 bucks? 80 bucks? Under 100 for sure. Like, give me a second to Google it and no, I will no. tell you. Any other questions? And will those work with these ones too? Well? So that one is specifically made with the, for the micro. Um, I'm sure there are other boom poles that yeah, they have no, out there that would work. Yeah, it's got a, um, a quarter 20 screw, so you can screw it in to whatever has that. Okay. Yeah, so it just might be a little too lightweight, right? Better. What? It might be a little too lightweight for like a pro or something. No, no, it'll hold any of that. What, what it won't hold, and someone wanted to use it for, was to put an iPad at the end of it. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, you're not gonna. It'll, it'll hold one of these. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So next is tripods. Um, kind of a simple and obvious thing, but some people overestimate the power of a tripod. Um, make stable video. That's kind of the thing. There's tripods out there. Um, so we have those set up in the back of the room, just your standard three-legged. Um, 
Then there's also going to be monopods. So let's say you're, you want something steady and stable, but you're going to be moving around a conference room or you're going to be moving around a, a room, constantly filming people, changing your direction. That one's nice because it's just a single stick. So you can prop it, be steady, and then quickly pick up and move somewhere else as opposed to picking up a three-legged heavier tripod. Uh, the next thing is a fluid head tripod. I'm going to switch to images, um, which is, can be seen on the left side, this kid filming the football game. Um, that's what we recommend for sports and coaches. Yeah, so if you're going to be doing a lot of panning shots, I definitely recommend investing in a f specifically a fluid head tripod. That's the only way it's going to give you that smooth function. Other tripods will, will pan, but they won't give you that security of a really nice smooth pan. Um, you know what I like about it too? The best yeah. thing I saw, because you know, my daughter was playing with me this, the other day with it, it's got a safety lock on it. Oh, yeah. And that's the coolest thing because they, she was already trying to click things and she couldn't <laughs> do it. And I was like, I know I can do it like, yeah. boom, and then there goes your yeah, topples over, over right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then let's see what else. Fluid head tripod. And then a table tripod. So that's going to be in the bottom picture there. Just a little, you know, pixie tripod, super small, just something to prop it up on the table. So, like I said, if you're a beginner vlogger or podcaster or something like that, just get a little something to prop up your iPad um, or your iPhone, and it really just makes a lot easier. That picture on the bottom right is our like, live uh, streaming kit that. Um it's like a little diva light there, so you use a nice little light. Um, turn around the wide angle lens, you can flip it around. And then uh, the little microphone, the, your, your shotgun mic, and it's all you need to get going and become an internet sensation. Yeah, absolutely. Chewbacca mom, you guys know. <laughs> um, any questions about tripods or anything like that? No? We made this so they will fit on, if you have old tripods or whatever yeah. tripod, any standard camera tripod. Yeah, if you use our case. I got a Go back to your audio. Yeah. I noticed on that picture you had the uh, the cord that you'd usually plugged in over here. Mm -hmm. Looked like you had a lightning cable. Yeah. So what we had oh, was here. I'm gonna unclip myself. Or do you want to grab it? Isn't that one right here? Mm, I don't think so. So that is a little headphone jack to lightning adapter. Um, so that's kind of became big when Apple decided to get rid of the headphone jack, so the iPhone 7s and the iPhone 8s. Um, and that just allows you to plug in audio into the lightning port instead. So a lot of customers have to use that because they don't have an audio yeah, jack. Yeah. Um, this is the big thing. So really quickly going back to you. Yeah. So the, the, all the microphones come with um, normal cables that you plug into your DSLR or your whatever. In order to work with iOS, you need one end to be the normal one, and the other end is called CRRS, like she said. The only way, you don't need to know, it's so crazy about what CRRS means. <laughs> it's got three little lines here, and that allows you to use mobile devices, and mm -hmm. that's all that matters. And um, so once you get that, then you're good to go. This is called a Rode, same company, Rode SC6. This is a little breakout box that I highly recommend if you guys are going to do stuff. What's nice about this, it's like $15 or something. You plug in, it's got two lines in and a headphone jack. Mm. So now I can do this with one. There's, so now I've got it plugged into one of them. I can have another microphone, a lab. Maybe I'm filming this way and I want to be mic myself. I'm doing interviews or whatever. Um, and then I can have headphones on. Um, and then this goes into the lightning jack, and it's going to get you better, a stronger audio signal. So. Yeah. And a thing to remember with that SC6 is you need to use either Filmic Pro oh, or Switcher yeah. um, or a special app because the camera app that comes on the iPhone or iPad doesn't support audio monitoring. So it is a little bit of a setback, but it really is helpful to be able to monitor audio as you're recording instead of having to record a little bit, pause it, take the headphones out, play it back, see if the audio is okay. Um, it really helps a lot. And it doesn't, like you said you had your lava mic, that one, and when you're recording and all that, uh, it's not going to interfere? Yeah, the sounds are. No. No? Because you're bringing in um, yeah. into the, uh, one mono track and it's going to sound great. Yeah. Oh, okay. With this so breakout then. box, you can only monitor after you film. You can no. Play. No, during. So you can if do you mono. use Filmic Pro, like oh, okay. I oh. said, it's my oh. favorite app. That's it's right. one of the only That's apps. Right. That's a couple right. of, I'm going to actually do a blog post soon That's about right. that. Still but Filmic Pro lets you hear as you're shooting. So yeah. in Filmic Pro, you can also change the gain control. Okay and do stuff like that, That's um, awesome. vital. You yeah. just like really blew my mind right now. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> no, because like sometimes you'll feel like 
you know, if you had their boom mic and then that other one that, so they don't, you know. No, what you do have to worry about is audio levels. Yeah. So if you have your, so you want to need to really test, uh, monitor, test it. Is that coming in too, too loud? Is this too hot? Should I, you know, um, you can lower the gain a little bit and stuff, you know? So there's nice. options, yeah. 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 Any other questions about audio? So like, so I'm going to go back to your point about the little dongle, the lightning to headphone jack adapter. So not everybody needs it. Not everybody has an iPhone 7 or 8. Um, if you have a headphone jack, great. But it can be a lot easier to be able to clip on your microphone and have it over here instead of having to stretch the adapter cable. So it just gives you a little bit more of a flexibility. And I believe it comes in the box with every iPhone 7 or 8. So everybody should have one if you need one. Like $10 yeah. Ten dollars, fifteen dollars, I think. Or... Yeah, but super cheap and affordable. Your experience yeah. using the boom? Did you get any handling noise? No, not at all. Not at all. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, because oh, I mean, no, no, the no. handling is going to be so far from where the mic is picking up audio, oh, okay. it won't be a bother at all. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we'll talk about at the end of this. But I want to do like a, an entire audio practice thing. Everyone brings their stuff. Let's, yeah. Let's try all the microphones out. You know, and really get into stuff like that. Well, we have it too, but you can, I would, you know, Amazon, Apple, anything, yeah. It's the lightning audio jack. It's, um, it's so it's going to be a headphone to lightning jack adapter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so then tripods, those are the pictures. Um, we actually covered lenses. Yeah, so we talked about lenses. Um, Wide-angle macro really telephoto. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of all that we have structured. Um, we have our handles there. So if you ever have any questions, write down this email, support at iographer. It'll most likely be me responding to you with any questions that you have. Hey, what was that one thing you talked about in that workshop? Or hey, could you possibly talk about this at another workshop? We'd love to hear that feedback. Um, so yeah. The next couple hours, we're going to watch Citizen Kane now. No. No, okay. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to so, do a, a raffle. Yeah. So this is interesting. We could actually, so. The goal is that we do more hands-on stuff. Is what I want. To, I'd love to hear feedback from all of you about what your thoughts are and what what you really like to learn. And you know, yeah. Um, since you are the foundation members now. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I would, yes. I'd love to see different scenarios. You know, we could bring our own You know, you know, like two-person interview or okay. So you know, doing sports events. So like, it would also be cool. I think. To go over to different, like you mentioned that diva light, and then you've also got the tube light that comes up, and then there's also the, the Manfrotto lamp. Manfrotto, yeah. So it'd be nice to see those in action. Okay. So do like a lighting night. Maybe like half the first half's lighting, the second half's all about audio. Then we do one on let's let's how about learning how to go live to the internet and, yeah, and yeah. doing things like that, you know, yeah. spending time on that, you know, stuff you like that. We don't have very many friends. We just wanted people to come. Uh, but now that you've been here, spread the word to anybody else who'd be interested. And whatever, if we didn't talk about it here, ask if we could do that because we want that feedback. Whatever you want to learn, we'll figure out how to teach you it. So, yeah. Um, right. And then, I like, um, for multicam stuff, I want to bring Nick from Switcher Studio. He wants to come out and do one and, and yeah. dog and pony, and he'll answer all your questions. And so we're, I'm going to bring in more guests like that. Adobe people has how you use their apps. and. So stuff like that, but yeah, this is number one. And I have a name tag, so bring it yes, that's your 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 name tag. <laughs> yeah, so you do a raffle? Any more? Any other questions? Do you have a way to so, so it's okay to spread the word at like colleges. I would love it. Okay. Yeah, and eventually I want to live stream from here, but I have to I have to find out how that all works. So we'll see. But we're recording it. We're going to upload it later, and you know, at the very least, just find people that want pizza, and you know, we're all good. Yes. Is, that, is everyone close by, or I know you guys are far away? Where, where are you from? To drive for us. Not too bad. Do you want, I can offer my class at John Muir. Oh, hey, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we could go there, too. Yeah, that's the 2 Yeah, that's not too bad, either. Yeah, my, my, I'm right around the corner, so I, I'm, I'm bad. And I'm like, I'll feed them, I'll give them whatever they want. I um, know. So I think in the near future, probably here for a little bit until we, you know, we get bigger or whatnot. I honestly, I've been working on for years. Um,
plans on doing a, a summit, like a three-day weekend kind of, and bringing all these people in, pros that are doing all this, and and doing a summit, and it definitely wouldn't be here. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> passing the convention center or something fun, you know, um, doing stuff like that. Anything else? We travel. <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to do it next month. We'll, we'll, we'll have it up right away about what we're going to do. And then we're going to put this video up for tonight, and people can kind of see what we're talking about. Okay, so, so in theory, then, instead of getting all these students that don't really have transportation, I could, I could put you in touch with a professor, and you could go to his class. And, and, and I, I go to her class. She's at Cal State LA. Okay, yeah. so Valley College, yeah. Valley College wouldn't be That's not that far, yeah. Okay. Anything on the west side, I don't go to. <laughs> I don't go on the 10 freeway, okay? <laughs> or the 405. <laughs> Other than that, I'll go anywhere. No, I'm joking. San Gabriel. San Gabriel, there you go. Um, yeah, so, okay, any, uh, that's it. Any questions, or should we raffle? And, um, and next month when you're planning, are we, you know, can we, like, give you input a little bit? Because, I mean, we're teachers, and right now yeah. it's, like, it's coming down to crunch time, so it's kind of hard, like, you know, most things are going to be near the Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays of the week because... Yeah. That's what we're going to be doing. Yeah, Award speech. Yeah, is, absolutely. Uh, all these nights coming up. I mean, is this not a, is a better night like a Wednesday yeah, or a Monday, Tuesday? Early in the week would be better for us. Early in the week. Crunch time. Maybe a little later, like starting at six. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So time wise, we didn't have any clue. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like six thirty, six something, you know, something like that. Get rid of maybe even seven. This thing's open till nine, so we can crunch things out in a couple hours, right? Including eating food, so. And I'm going to get some sponsors for that. You watch. So now let's, let's give some stuff away. Okay. So I threw some extra ones in here just in case people would show up late. So if I call them, remember you're not here. Okay. 943-3914. I think you just need the last numbers. Which one? The, the last four. Okay, I'm just going to read the last three numbers. Okay. 897. <coughs> Wait, what are we raffling? You gotta pick something. <laughs> Video micro. Uh, the fuzzy one right here. With the special adaptive cables, so don't worry. No, wait, this, that's the first, so raffle that first. <laughs> it's hard to find help. 899? 899. Wow! <laughs> and you didn't want to come from Los Feliz, see? Congratulations. The next thing we're rolling off is the iRig Mic Lab. That's a lavalier one that plugs directly into your phone and has a monitoring. 909? Ben. It's good you put the extra tickets in. Adds to the drama. Adds to the drama. 906? Your friends that left? Yeah. <laughs> What? There you go, sir. All right, last one is the video mic go with a special adapter cable. So that's going to be this microphone. And a hat. And a hat. And a hat. And a hat. <laughs> 912. Oh, rigged. I love it. <coughs> Yeah, go ahead. Does anyone have iPad Mini? Uh, which version? Two. Two? I don't know. Those might, they might fit in there. Oh, the camera's not centered. Those are the four. Do we have the Mini? Does anybody have an iPad Mini 4? That's the latest version. I think this one is. It's the latest one, right? Yeah, all of it's the latest one. That one is? Yeah. Oh. Take this piece of drum? <laughs> nah. No. This thing is a piece of drum. Oh, that's right. Yes, let's tear that up. No, I'm joking. <laughs> well, we can film it. Let's pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give away two more cases, and it's going to be a case of your choice. So you tell me what device you have, and then you will send them to you. 901. <laughs> Did you get a raffle ticket? I can't 
him everything. I give him everything. I I'm a river to him. <laughs> Do you have an iPhone? No, I have an Android device. Oh, we have something coming yeah, soon for that. Yeah. So, so you're going to email me? Yeah. All right, last one. Nine oh four. This guy has to check his ticket. All right. <laughs>